Now in this video, we are going to perform a multiple regression. So the idea of a multiple regression is to predict the variability in one variable, in our case, that is the quality measure, using a lot of uh, other variables. And in this case, we're gonna use all of the features that are available in our data set. So how well can we predict quality based on all of these individual features here? Okay, that's the idea of a multiple regression. Now, there are multiple ways to implement a multiple regression in Python. The way that I did it here is using statsmodels.api. So it's a library, statsmodels.api. And the only reason why I'm preferring that method here is because it prints out this really nice table, which I think is, is very informative and clear and easy to look at. So the way that I recommend going about doing this is to come up with two new pandas data frames, one data frame that contains only the quality metric and the other, that's the dependent variable, and the other data frame has all the other columns except for quality, and that is the independent variables. Now you're also going to need to add a constant, or sometimes called an intercept term, to this model. So um, the uh, OLS function, so ordinary least squares, OLS model framework in uh, statsmodels.api does not automatically include a constant, so you will need to add a constant to the model. And then you fit the model and you can print out the model summary and it's going to look like this. Now, here we see the important column of the p-value. This tells us whether each of these individual predictors is statistically significant. So if the p-value is smaller than 0.05, then we consider that that feature is significantly predictive of the wine quality. So you see these are not significant. This one is volatile acidity. We've also uh, discovered that in the previous video with TTAS. Uh, not significant, not significant. And here's chlorides that is a significant predictor of quality and so on. So based on this column, what you want to do is create a vertical list of all of the features in the data set that are significant predictors of the uh, quality, of the wine quality, based on whether they are less than P equals 0.05. So uh, so you can see it's a, a vertical list here that you print out, it looks like this. And then what you want to do is take all of these uh, features here and then generate another pair plot that looks something like this. Now this is gonna be really, really large because we have uh, I think there's like seven total significant predictions. I'm not even showing the entire plot here. It's, it's really big. And it's also split up according to quality, just like we did in uh, the first video in this project. So, uh, so, so generate a plot that looks like this based on just the variables that are significant predictors of quality. Okay, and that's going to do it for this video. So pause the video and switch to Python, do some coding, make sure you can reproduce my results. And now I will switch to Python and you can see how I solved these problems. So as I mentioned, I'm going to implement the multiple regression here using statsmodels.api and I'm going to uh, abbreviate this as SM. So that's going to be the alias that I will use here. Okay, so I mentioned that it's good to, or it's convenient to come up with two additional pandas data frames. One is for the dependent variable, and that one's going to be data quality. And so we can uh, see what this is going to look like. Not super interesting, it's just all of the, uh, it's just one column, basically all of the quality uh, metrics. And then we want another one, and that's going to be all of the, uh, basically everything else, everything else in data except for quality. We want to exclude quality. So the way that we do that, I'll call that independent variables. And the way that we do that is by data.drop. And what do we want to drop? Well, we want to drop labels equals quality. So that's going to drop that label. Now let's have a look and see what this data frame looks like. Hmm. Well, it doesn't look like much because uh, we don't get any errors. So 
or, or we, we get an error. So this is telling us that quality not found in axis, and it, it doesn't provide, uh, it doesn't say which axis. So in fact, this is looking for rows here, but it's not that we have a row that's called quality. We have a column that's called quality. So we need to tell Pandas to specifically look for uh, columns that are called quality and remove those. And then we're gonna get what we want. So you can see that this data frame stops at alcohol. It doesn't contain that last column, which was called quality, that was dropped. All right, very nice. So now we are ready to set up our model. So we say model equals sm.ordinary least squares. That's an algorithm for computing a multiple regression. So we first list the uh, n dog. This is endogenous and this is exogenous. I, I really, you know, sometimes it's infuriating to me that uh, these Python developers come up with these really obtuse terms that just make it confusing. So endogenous is the uh, the response variable. Even that is is not standard. This is the only standard term here, the dependent variable. So that's dep var dependent variable. And then we have the uh, independent variables. And we can immediately fit this like this. And then we can say print. Well, actually, let's just look at this model like this, see what happens. Okay, so what happens is this just gives us a uh, basically a location to uh, to the uh, the uh, or an address to the location on memory where this object is stored. In fact, what we want to do is print model dot summary, and that's going to give us this nice summary that I showed in the slides. Except I showed that there was a another. A regressor up here, which was the constant or the intercept. And I also said verbally that it's important to add that intercept. Without that intercept, uh, basically these models are difficult to interpret. So what I'm going to do now is add the constant to this data frame. So the way that works is you write int vars equals sm dot add constant and we want to add it to in var. So we're just overwriting this uh, variable in place and adding the constant. So then we can run all this code again. And now we see we have the constant in here. It's not significant, but that doesn't mean that it's not important to include in the model. Okay, so very good. So that now successfully completes that aspect of this video. And the next thing that we want to do is identify and then print out a list of all of the significant predictors in this model. So all of the, the columns or the features that are statistically significantly related to wine quality. Of course, alcohol is in there. You know, you're asking people to drink wine and rate it. So the more they get drunk, the, the better they think the wine is. Pretty simple, I think. Okay, but so what we want to do is access this column here. We want to access the p-values column so we can identify which of these elements is less than 0.05. So let's just try playing around. Let's see, model dot, and I'm going to start typing p value. And here we see a column called p values. So let's run this. Here we see all of the columns and all of the p values here listed in scientific notation. So we can say something like less than 0.05. And now this is going to tell us true or false. So this is getting better. And now what we want to do is identify the the uh, the elements in this first column. And remember, these are the keys. This is like a uh, like accessing a dictionary or a pandas data frame. So we want to write model dot p values p values less than 0.5, and then we want the keys like this. And that is going to tell us what columns are uh, have a value of true over here. Okay, now this turns out to be uh, an object that, that's not terribly useful. So I want to convert this into a list. And there you go. Now, this is not exactly how I showed it in the slides. I didn't show it with the single quotes and I didn't show it with the square brackets surrounding it. So let's put this into a uh, a variable, I'll call it sig 
calls for significant columns. Now we can print out sig calls, but that's also, you know, this doesn't look like how it how I showed it in these slides. So we need to, to work on this printing a little bit more. Now, one key insight into how we set this up, how we get this printing to work, is we can print the first element and then we can print the second element and then we can print the third element like this. So this is starting to look good. And this is basically where we where I'm going with this. So the way that I'm going to implement this is by uh, using a list comprehension. You can also do this in a for loop. I'm going to do this in a list comprehension. So print i for i in sig calls. And all right, that looks pretty good. Now we get a bunch of none, 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 nones here. And that's because the output of the print function is none. So this is just, you know, just because this is the last line of this cell, then it's printing out the output of print, which is, uh, it's, it's a none type. Okay, and then this brings us to the very last thing, not in this project because there's another video, but the very last thing that we want to do in this video, which is to produce another pair plot, so sns.pair pair plot, and it's going to be data, and we don't want all of the data, we just want the data for the columns where the uh, regression was significant, which are these columns here. So sig calls, and then we want to, let's say, kind equals reg for regression. And now this is like what I showed in uh, the first video, in the beginning when we first imported the data, except there, I think, let's see, I'll even stop this because this isn't correct yet. Uh, what we had there was that we separated the color or the hue according to quality. Now, you might remember that um, in the first video, we got an error there and we got that error because, let's see, uh, I have to run this again. Okay, so here we see the error. So we get this error because uh, quality doesn't actually exist in this data frame yet. And that's because this data frame only contains these columns here, only these significant columns. And quality is actually not included in there. So what I'm going to do, therefore, is add the column label. So I will append to this list quality. And that is going to give us another element in this uh, list here, which is quality. And then that means that quality is going to be included inside this data frame here, which will finally allow us to uh, do this. Now, this plot is probably going to take a minute to render because it's it's a lot of data. It's a, it's a lot of graphics to render here. All right, so that took a good almost 30 seconds to render this entire plot. But here it is. And we can zoom all the way out to see if we can get this whole thing in, even all the way zoomed out. It still doesn't all get into uh, one figure. The, the one thing, the last thing I would like to point out in this video is that what we are actually testing with our multiple regression is just the diagonal of these uh, this matrix here. So the uh, regression is only testing whether the variables themselves are, are varying according to the quality measure. Now we have all these all this other data in here, and that is the relationships between the different pairs of variables. Now that could also be something interesting to look at. These would be called interactions. So each one of these off-diagonal elements corresponds to a particular interaction term of a multiple regression. And we didn't test that in this particular video, but I just want to point out that there is a huge amount of information still in this data set that we have not explored. And that's the kind of thing that would, you know, you would learn more about in a in a full statistics course. But for now, I believe that this was sufficient to give you uh, a bit of an intro to using uh, uh, multiple regression in Python. And now in the next video, we're going to do something else, which is called a logistic regression. So I'll see you soon.